welcome to the all-new Marvelicious Toys podcast, hosted by the astonishing Arnie, the mighty Marjorie, and Captain Justin. Nah, just Justin. Join us at MarveliciousToys.com to find thousands of pictures of the items reviewed, find links to our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages, and much more. Hello and welcome to Marvelicious Toys. This is Marjorie. This is Arnie. And this is Justin. And welcome to New Marvelicious Toys Volume 2. Woohoo! We've decided to kind of redo things a little bit. We're going to be a video podcast. We're going to be live. We're going to be more interactive. We're going to be once a month doing the full-on show live in this format, and then each week we're going to be doing a review or a little one-off thing not live. Yeah, we're kind of, you know, catching up with the times here, maybe uh, doing things that are a little more time-pressing. You know, a lot of times we get to reviews, and by the time we get to show edited and stuff like that, I don't want to say a wave of figures is old news, but... Eh, a lot of people have them in hand by then, and it's not doing anybody any good to watch a review of something that they already bought. Yeah, so we thought we'd take this opportunity to go live and discuss a little old news. San Diego Comic-Con! <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a lot of news that came out at Comic-Con, though. Yeah, Comic-Con was an interesting time this year. A lot of things were different for Comic-Con. We had... A closed off road. We had lotto systems. Yeah, it was really different this year with Hasbro having the lottery. So preview night, we were just all instantly out. We didn't get anything. But on the flip side, Thursday afternoon, we could just walk wired up to Hasbro and buy stuff. Like yeah. no lines. That that I think threw us all backwards for loop because when last we talked to everybody. We were waiting to find out about our lottery picks, and we had no idea how this was going to go down. But I think in the back of our head, you know, we were quietly optimistic that we'd at least get, you know, a ticket to the Hasbro line, if not Funko or something at some point. But all of us got shut out. Nothing. Zilch. Zip. Nada. I know. It was hard to believe that we lost so hard on every possible front. But Funko, Hasbro, Lego. I think Daryl won a Lego or two. But keep in mind, guys, there's like nearly 200,000 people that go. Only so many slots for exclusives. I think people panic because there are some sites that build up hype about Comic-Con. And people who necessarily didn't want the Hasbro exclusives just entered the lottery for Hasbro exclusives because they could. Yeah, I know people entered some just for the sake of, hey, if I win, that's like winning money because I'll take it to eBay because I bought stuff on eBay from people who listed it. Like, I have a guarantee because I won the lotto. That's how I got my Mondo Avengers poster. (laughs) But yeah, it was strangely zen, though. I mean, Justin, I know you were a little bit bummed, but for me, my attitude was we don't have to fight. We don't have to go and like, try to figure out what to do and scheme and try to see if we can get a early access to the floor or all we have to do wait for August 13th at HasbroToyShop.com. And I usually have pretty decent luck there. (laughs) Yeah. And you know, I mean, yeah, I was bummed because I was, I was kind of on board for this line ticketing lottery. I kind of like that idea because it does take away that anxiety of, oh, geez, do we try to get in there preview night and, you know, throw some bows and make our way in there? And, you know, if we got a a lottery spot, then you just put that on the back of your brain and you go show up when it's time. And once we found out that we were shut out, that just kind of hit me hard. I was like, wow, we're going all the way to, to San Diego and we'll be able to touch and smell and look at the Hasbro booth. And not be able to get in that line. You yeah, know? It, it's kind of weird because, you know, we had to put in the effort before to get it. You know, waiting in line, getting punched, kicked, everything. And the lottery system kind of 
gave us a fair shot, but I actually don't know anybody that won a Hasbro ticket. Not a single person. And it makes me wonder how many people entered. There were still a lot of people preview night who were like, what? We needed a lotto? I can't just force my way in line and pay for my trip this way because I have an exhibitor badge. There were a lot of confusion going on, including from the Hasbro employees, because I found a line along the wall and it said Hasbro auxiliary line. And Steve Evans was there with Hasbro. I'm like, Steve, does that mean I can get in the line? He's like, I have no idea what's going on. (laughs) Comic-Con didn't tell us anything about this auction thing. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that is more to the point right there is that, there, there was a lot of miscommunication between the folks who put on Comic-Con and Hasbro. Because I don't think Hasbro is going to sit down and say, okay, Comic-Con guys, here's how many people we can get through line on an average hour. Here's how many exclusives we brought of each thing. They're not going to give them that information. So this was all just kind of guesswork done by San Diego's part. And what it did is it left Hasbro... By, like you said, Marjorie, by Thursday afternoon at five saying, hey, lines open, no tickets needed. Come on in. I, I want to say that I had gone back to the hotel to take something back to the hotel and I was meeting you guys. And you three came in like giddy little schoolboys with your Hasbro bags, all excited. Look what we were able to get. It was really funny to watch <laughs> the, the sour faces of the morning where everybody's just kind of like, rum, 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 we're not going to get anything, blah, blah, blah. I was okay with it. I was yeah, not you, grumpy. Okay, you were kind of zen. Justin was grumpy about it. But... You were Justin. It's okay. I was a little. I was a little buttered about it. You yeah. were a little. You were a little salty. But <laughs> then you guys, it was like Christmas morning, and you were so excited that you were able to get your toys, and it was a lot of fun. It was really funny because we had just finished doing the live booth tour at General Giant, and I was having a conversation with Daniel Pickett, who's General Giant's PR rep now, and has done a lot of toy reviews himself. And we were kind of talking shop and it was this really interesting conversation, you know, just really hitting some topics. And then I get a text Hasbro line open, everything available, no wait. And I'm like, Daniel, I'll catch up later. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) I was out of there. (laughs) I got to you and Barrett. I'm like, really? We're here. And I still, I held back. I didn't buy as much as I usually do because I'm still waiting for Hasbro Toy Shop. If I'm getting a second one of the Defenders Subway set, I'm going to do that and make Hasbro ship it. I'm not going to ship it. Yeah, hey, I'm right there with you. I I picked up one of those and I picked up two of the Red Skull just because, you know, that's an awesome piece to keep in the box. I like the packaging on that. And it, it was smaller, much easier to ship than that huge tube of a thing. But before we get too far away from it, I just, I think we really have to paint this picture because usually, like we've said before, the the lines are somewhere along the wall. Some of the times it's up in the sales pavilion or whatever. And by the time you get to the actual booth, there's like cattle call rules that, you know, once you get to that point, you probably have about 45 minutes to an hour before you're at the, the front placing your order. When we got in that line, it was like, oh, wow, look at this. We grabbed our piece of paper. We're looking at it kind of like, well, maybe you get one of these, one of these. Look at this. Oh, oh, it's my turn. It was seriously like 45 seconds from the time we went into that line to the time we were up at the counter checking out. Yeah, it was hectic. I did pick up some of the Star Wars stuff, too. Didn't pick up any of the Transformer stuff. I know so many people go in there and just circle it. But I agree with what you say, Justin. I think that Comic-Con International severely underestimated the number of people that can get through that Hasbro line. Those people are pros, you know, they know what they're doing. They get you the stuff. They try to get as many people through as fast as possible. And every single afternoon you could just walk right up and they never sold out of the Marvel exclusives or the star Wars exclusives. No. And it's worth mentioning too. It's just because it was open every day. Doesn't mean that they, didn't mark your badge. So it's not like, you know, a scalper could walk in there and walk out with a, you know, a cartload of, of the red skulls or anything, you know, they mark your badge and it's, if it's limit two, then that's all you could get on that badge. And if you're watching live, 
This is a photo I took Sunday afternoon, just a couple hours before the floor was to close. Do you see all those subway sets? Do you see all those red skulls? Those are just what they had out front. They had boxes more in back. Yeah, and these they did mention during the panel that these are multi-con exclusive. So these will be traveling. I think last weekend was an unboxing con in Mexico City that I think these were available there as well. So th this might be a year where they've produced even more than normal on these exclusives. Yeah, I had the same situation. I went up Friday and I was able to just go through the rows, which got to be like the second row. The guy's like, all right. He just opened it up so I could walk straight up. They handed me a pen. They handed me the flyer. And then I was at the cash register. I didn't have a chance to fill out the flyer. It was so quick. And I would like to point out the only thing that sold out of Star Wars or Marvel was the Porg set. That's true. The Porg sold out by Friday. Yeah. It was the first and only thing to sell out of their two major properties. Well, some people consider Transformers major. That's sold That's out. true. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but just, the, not, just not a property that we care about. No. Have like, you seen those movies? Like Bumblebee. Are you, are you excited for the Bumblebee movie this December? Oh, God, no. So how much do you really like Bumblebee there? Yeah, all right. Fair <laughs> point. But, yeah, that worked out pretty well. So then I only had to go to eBay for the Lego, which I'm not even going to say how much lube I needed to pay for that Deadpool Lego minifigure. Lego, stop making Deadpools, because those are always, like, double the price of when you do, like, Falcon, Captain America, or Phoenix. Honestly, I think we all just need to stop making Deadpools because, oh my gosh, man, I know Justin, you love Deadpool, but I feel like I'm getting like Deadpool Thelioma or something and I just, I can't do it anymore. Well, I mean, you know that we've reached maximum Deadpool when they're making role play items that show up in Target for kids of Deadpool, a rated R movie property. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you can buy katanas that are Deadpool. You can buy a mask and even the $9 soap shampoo bottle Deadpools are out there. So it's uh, we're, we're getting there with well, Deadpool I guess overload. I, you know, I don't, I don't have kids, but don't kids go full on Winnie Pooh all the time around your house? And that <laughs> My kid's a little too old to do that, but yeah, well, they used When he to. was little? Yep. Yeah, okay. he's in his 20s now. If he did it now, that would be a little If weird. he's got his own place, he can do it, you know. <laughs> Hey, and so what he does there, that's his deal. So let's talk about the exclusives. You mentioned the Red Skull. I definitely think that's the more exciting of the Marvel exclusives because of the light-up Tesseract. I mean, when they throw in these little gimmicky things, they've always got me in for an extra one because they did this, remember, with the three-and-three-quarter-inch Infinity Gauntlet set where you got that foam Infinity Gauntlet years yeah. ago. And speaking of which, that's showing up, just not to sidetrack us too much, that exact gauntlet is showing up at, like, Ross and TJ Maxx type of stores now on its own. What? Yeah, well, I have to glad I bought three sets then for it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Red, School, Red Skull. How awesome is this figure? We get a battery-operated Tesseract, which I don't know if you've had a chance to open yours, but... It's kind of a crazy little contraption. It's a plastic see-through box that you open the lid on, and then inside of it is the blue part that kind of breaks in half. And so now you have two halves that have kind of that chunky rock type of texture to it. And inside of that is an LED ball that you have to put batteries in. And so that's what makes it light up. It's, I mean, it's one of these things where it's like you could have just put battery compartment on the back of it and a light switch there but no they, they made it this three-part thing for some reason <laughs> were the batteries included or did you have to take it apart in order to light it up the first time oh no you have to take it apart and the, by the time you get to the little led ball you need a little screwdriver and i believe it's like three AAA batteries it runs on so the good news is you don't have to open it to avoid battery leakage is what i'm hearing Right, yeah, no, there's, if you want to keep one mint in box, you don't have to open it up to get that out because the batteries are not in there. Thank you, Hasbro. Thank you. They should do that for everything, really. Although everything I, in the entire world that's made that could be collected should have this done. But the figure itself, 
I'm glad they got an MCU Red Skull from the first Avenger in. You know, it wasn't part of the regular line. This it feels like our last attempt to get this. Yeah, and I was, you know, last time we talked about this, there's so much stuff coming at us. I can't keep up with it all the time. But I know that we're getting a single boxed version of Red Skull at retail in that 10th anniversary line. And they are different. I think it might be the same head sculpt. But that that other, the retail version Red Skull comes with some Hydra soldier heads and stuff like that. So you can army build with it. This one is unique as far as I can tell for now. Huh. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that it's the same head sculpt. They often do that with their exclusives. But yeah, with the Tesseract and the long coat, it's just a, a striking figure there. But then, of course, there's the subway set. Uh, and I was talking to Dwight Stahl at the Hasbro breakfast, and I pointed out to him that I was mistaken. I thought Luke Cage was punching Jessica Jones, and she was like <laughs> flying back in the seat. And he's like, you know, no one's ever said that, but I can see it. That's on me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you added a little bit of action there where they're all just kind of chilling out. But I, I, I see what you see now. <laughs> it's because she's lifted up off the seat. And he mentioned, well, we had to do that to make sure they didn't rub and didn't move around. But yeah, the fact that she's uplifted makes it look to me like she's flinging backwards. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that, it's that right leg. Yeah, I was going to say, it's that leg sticking out like it makes it a motion. And everybody else is just cool with that. Like, let's not get involved. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the one that both of us just only picked up the one of. So we didn't have to ship multiple home. But it's Okay, a- but I, I think you guys made the right decision. One, because it's large and you'd have to ship it home. And it'll be available at Hasbro Toy Shop. And it's shipping a lot of air. I mean, this is, it's five figures and a lot of space. Especially, it feels like they should have put a sixth figure in at that other door where you just have a door and it says, do not lean on door. Does that not say, hey, I need to put a figure there? Yeah, <laughs> right I, now well, it, it looks like Iron Fist passed gas or something and everybody's like scooting down. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that they have the MTA map, the subway map up in that with all the different colors and everything that I thought was a nice little touch. The only thing they needed is a bit more graffiti. Yeah. And, you know, it's really clean and there's nobody trying to get money from you. So no performances. No, but there, I mean, there is a lot of detail in there. I mean, all the little signs and everything. It's it's there's a lot of love that went into designing this package. So that's. That's cool. I'm still trying to decide if I want one to open or if I'm going to be happy with just the way this displays as it is. See, and I'm in such a position where space is at a premium that if I only have one, I'm definitely opening it. But yeah, come Monday the 13th, I'm going to be on Hasbro Toy Shop hit and refresh like a mofo. (laughs) (laughs) And I got to think my favorite figure in there is Electra in the white outfit. It's a nice change from what we got in the line there have been a lot of defenders figures lately and i was really excited when they did the defenders wave i thought that was really cool they were bringing in the netflix thing here it's like and they did it again yeah i mean it we i think we talked about it a little bit before before we went out there but it, it does feel like a lot of repacks i know we got some heads this time which is cool but yeah Electra's the only newish feeling figure here i mean it looks like new shoes an all new body sculpt, obviously a whole new face sculpt. So yeah, this is this is the new thing in this package. And I'm just looking at it like, okay, so now we have a female in jeans and a tank top and all the different parts that they can use later on to get some more plain clothed people out there. Yeah. Well, that Jessica Jones, I think they basically just took her her leather jacket off and gave her some different arms from her regular release. Yeah. Which, and I I can tell that Iron Fist is just that old banner figure, isn't it? The one that kind of disheveled suit banner. <laughs> I mean, it appears to be. I, I don't know if they might have. Yeah, because he doesn't have the tie on or whatever. Mm-hmm. But he, do, he does have some kicks on his feet. He's got some white tennis shoes on. And that's pretty that's pretty cool. I might have to grab one to use for the, a custom on those. Wait a sec. I thought no characters in loafers. Yeah, that's, <laughs> these have laces. They're tennis shoes, man. <laughs> 
I like the head sculpts. I mean, they were good before the blank look that they gave Charlie Day's Daredevil. Wait, is it Charlie Day or is that the guy from? <laughs> That's just always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that the little short guy that talks funny? <laughs> yeah, I'm of course mean Charlie Cox, not Charlie Day, but the Charlie Cox likeness with kind of the stare that he does where it's kind of looking off and, you know, feigning blindness. I think they captured that really well. Yeah, this figure really does sell blindness to me. <laughs> Sorry. And of course, to get this stuff home, we had to have <laughs> we did some dumpster diving. You did. <laughs> it was the cleanest dumpster diving you'll ever do, though. Yeah, but it worked because we saved so much money in shipping. Justin, you saved money in shipping, too, didn't you? Holy cow. We just we get smarter about this every year, you know? Yes. Like, I think the first this time year, you guys went out there, you might even ship directly from the floor of the con. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that FedEx yeah, stop. Yeah. We, Yes, yes. And they charge at least $10 per package. And it's based on the weight and size of the package. So your convenience is sometimes costing $50 a package. I know Jerry asked me to send him a transformer one time and I sent him the transformer. And, you know, it's not easy to do a pickup for somebody at San Diego. But I was able to get this transformer, and I said, listen, you're responsible for shipping. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I gave him the $87 shipping bill, I think he was less than – he was filled with something other than gratitude at getting that transformer. Then it was available at Hasbro Toy Shop for like a month. He was, oh, I oh, hate when that happens. Ouch. <laughs> but yeah, we did – on the last day, I went to Hasbro, and they just had all the boxes out there. We took a ton of them. It did save a lot of money on shipping. And we just got corrected. We are all wrong. That is not Electra. What? That is Colleen Wing. Thank you to Patrick and to Chico and to Renee. Colleen Wing from Iron Fist. As you could tell, I'm a little behind on my Iron Fist series. Yeah, I'm a lot behind on that one. I haven't even started Iron Fist yet. So <laughs> I'm stuck in Luke Cage. So thank you for that correction. This is one good thing about being live is when we make a fool out of ourselves, we can just correct ourselves right now <laughs> instead of having to wait two weeks for the next show. That's right. Instant redactions. But yet it's still kind of like with the sword and everything. That's why I thought it was Electra. But yeah, I, I like the tracksuit look. Yeah. I mean, like I said, with it being an all new sculpt and everything, it's still a great figure, you know? But yes, shipping. I spent a third or more than what I have in previous years for shipping. You you guys are smart enough to bring shipping tape and bubble pack and yep. using these other boxes, packed it up ourselves, took it right down to the FedEx location outside of our hotel, and was done with it. It worked perfectly. So I brought a big roll of bubble wrap in a suitcase. I had a tape gun. I had tape. The only thing I didn't bring was a packing knife, and that's because we flew so we may do, and I think it worked out pretty well. And a packing knife, compared to what we've spent some years on shipping, you could buy and throw away a packing That's knife true. for what we saved. I think this is the first year we've gotten out of there with, what, under $200 in shipping? Yeah, it was under 175 actually. And we ship packages to several people, not just ourselves. Yes. Now our secret's out, so we're going to have to start throwing elbows for empty boxes next year. They had so many, and I felt like a little bit of a weirdo going up there and being like, there was just a guy, you know, he's a convention worker who has to just break down the boxes. And I'm like, you mind if I take some of your boxes? He's like, help yourself. And that way I started, I found a not broken down box and filled it with more boxes. He looked at me and was like, okay. <laughs> and then I'm walking out of the center with these boxes and people think that I've scored majorly. And then they're like, wait. Those are just boxes. I take them to bag check and bag check looks at me like, what is. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to point out, though, in Star Wars, these shipper boxes, people would be collecting them in 10, 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. And here's Daryl sweating on them. <laughs> that bottom box had a Daryl sized imprint. <laughs> 
What a trooper, though. I mean, he he carried those all the way from, from the convention center through the crowd on a hot day all the way down to where we were meeting our ride. And I, I couldn't have done it. I think I would have passed out after lugging him that far. I carried him about a third of the way. He did the next two thirds. I can tell you it was rough. <laughs> and next to him, by the way, is my just it's become a photo essay for me now is Spider-Man at the ATM. Just <laughs> park your luck. And do you notice this was in California? There's a plastic straw, folks. Get it. <sighs> there is. This is before the ban. <laughs> He might be solving the crime, actually. <laughs> who, That's true. Who threw the straw? <laughs> but this show, we are going to focus on Hasbro and their presentation at Comic-Con. We'll be back in a couple weeks, even though we're monthly. We're going to come back in a couple weeks to talk about all the other cool stuff at Comic-Con. But Hasbro, they had out a lot of stuff that I already have. <laughs> yeah, the, the first couple days, the the little jewel boxes that they display waves in was filled with stuff that's been out for months and stuff that's been out for a couple weeks and stuff that, you know, had hit right before we left and is still coming out now. So it didn't feel like there was a whole lot new going on at first, but then I think we all, it kind of hit us like how much stuff they are doing this year alone. So might as well just start with where the year started and show us everything that's come out so far and then start showing us what's coming out for the rest of the year. It feels like we've had even more than this earlier this year, though. It really does, especially with the 10th anniversary set shipping and with Toys R Us closing and all of those Toys R Us two packs and things. It just feels like it's been a busier year than it was. And they didn't have like their Hydra Soldier two pack out there. They didn't have their Cyclops and Phoenix two pack and things that were this calendar year. Right. Yeah. These these are kind of just saved for the build a figure waves. And I think a lot of those other things might have been hidden in the diorama. But yeah, this it's just kind of you take a step back and you realize how many figures and how many awesome waves we're getting all at once. And it it seems a little overwhelming when you, you just kind of take it all in. The wave that I didn't realize was hitting stores, but. It's because I haven't got them in my hands yet is the Venom wave. And that wave, I just I cannot describe how excited I am for. I have like four spider hams on order. <laughs> he is kind of <laughs> cute. And I'm trying to get a second Venom so I can just have the black ham body on him. So have Venom ham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is it's a fun wave. And, you know. They don't have it here because it's the open ones, but the packaging on this wave is really cool because they've reversed it out. The packaging is white with color images on the side rather than what they've been doing with the black and choosing a color. It's 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 a nice stark contrast, and you'll be able to pick it out when you see it on the shelf at retail. I almost passed it by, actually, thinking it was... I can't remember what... It, I thought it looked like transformers or something there's something else that has a white card and i walk right by it not even realizing it was marvel when i was at target it is it's it's a really neat thing to do and i, I hope they take an opportunity to to switch out the color scheme in other waves every once in a while too yeah, I think when we get new cards and new packaging, it's super exciting. Like, I loved, loved, loved the design and color scheme of Infinity War. And I wish we'd gotten some more in that. Because I thought those two colors, I'm not normally a gold fan, but those looked really good together. And my thing is, Having seen the latest Venom movie trailer, I think these figures are the best thing coming out of there being a Venom movie. <laughs> <laughs> so give me that carnage and that monster Venom any day. Yeah. And, you know, we haven't had a chance to review these yet, but I did. I did pick up a spider ham. And have you noticed that this is the first time that I can remember getting in the modern line a build a figure with a two part torso The his the. The huge Venom Build-A-Figure is his torso split in half. You have to put the front onto the back. It's I don't think big. we've gotten a bit. Of, I don't think we've gotten a Build-A-Figure like that. I think you're absolutely right because usually it's this weird torso without arms, legs, and a head. Yeah. So I guess the question I have is then not seeing the packaging. 
do we have more figures in that wave or do they come separate just to fit in the packaging? Is that what's going on? Well, the, the huge pieces come with spider ham. So that's why he's small and in that package squished in there with two parts of a torso. It's really like you're buying the monster venom torso and you're getting an extra spider ham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The closest thing I can remember having something close to that would be the, the Hulk buster. That was that was built in a strange way as well. But no, it just really, really stuck out to me how big this thing's going to be that the torso itself wouldn't fit in the regular packaging. Since you have spider ham in your hand, does <laughs> it have any articulation <laughs> below the waist? Um, His ankle swivel, like right where okay. his red socks come up, that swivels. And That's one thing weird. I haven't seen is it's not just a swivel waist. It's a ball joint waist. So he's got a lot Ooh. of motion in his waist. So he can really <laughs> lumbata. Yeah. If it was 1989. Yeah. I, I Very obscure reference there, Arnie. It's the forbidden ham. The forbidden <laughs> ham. <laughs> You're talking about the Richie Valens movie. Not the forbidden <laughs> dance. <laughs> but no, I... Really do like the look of those figures. It's just a lot of fun in the way. But yeah, from the photos I took, I couldn't tell if there was any articulation below. It does have nice articulation in the arms, though. Yeah, I mean, for a little figure, it's got all the articulation you could ask for. I mean, sure, would I like, you know, fully ball jointed ankles and knees? Yeah, but at the end of the day, how many different ways are you going to pose this guy? All of them. All of them. All the ways. Yeah, the showing the venom head because they kept switching them out. They have a lot of fun at the Hasbro booth, which is maddening. If you're a completist photographer, like we are where you want to get photos of everything, they threw the venom head on the, or the spider ham venom head on the venom body. And I like that. It has the boars tusks and everything. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, when I first saw it, I thought it might have just been a repaint that they did to mess with this. But no, that comes with the Spider-Ham figure as well. So it's kind of a neat way to get people to to complete the wave, which it's not a huge wave. You know, we've seen bigger waves. It's, it's what, six. six? Six? That's a pretty good size for a Build-A-Figure. That's about the minimum you're going to get. And I'd say six is average. <laughs> <laughs> what they tell you. <laughs> But yeah, that wave is hitting now. So I've heard people finding that at Walgreens and Target. I'm not I'm not quite sure about Wal or Walmart at this point, but things well, are Rex, starting to happen. Rex uh, in our chat has said that his three targets got the entire wave and sold out within a day. Yeesh. Yeah, I, I've not seen it. I've been hitting Walmart and Walgreens pretty frequently. And they keep getting old stuff, like really old stuff, stuff so old that when I find it, I'm like, oh, is this new? Because I've forgotten about it. Yeah, she calls me sometimes and is like, do we have this figure from 2014? Well, <laughs> you know, what's weird is it. I've seen a lot of this going on online when when people are saying, hey, the new X-Men wave is out. And it is people are starting to find it at Walmarts. And then a lot of people go to Walmarts and the old X-Men wave has shown up again for some reason. And yeah, the same thing with Spider-Man. Yeah, like they have these old waves sitting around that they're putting out at the same time as the new waves of the same brand, and it just uh, clogs the pegs. But Our Walgreens that is near where I work still has a bunch of Namors. <laughs> yeah, Namor is thick in the woods there. And Here's what just to, while we're talking about Walgreens real quick. The Silver Surfer did go online today for order. We posted that. So we're not going to get to it in the show. It's not part of Comic-Con, but it is out there. Yeah, and just go order it right on their site and everything. So it's pretty easy. And you can even check to see if any are available in your local area for pickup. But here's here's what's concerning me with all these new waves. At least one or two of them is eventually going to be easy to find. you know. But guessing which one that is, is the gamble. So, like, if you see a wave that you want at the store and are thinking, geez, I just spent all this money on, you know, the other wave the other day, it's kind of hard to pick this up now. It, it's kind of filling me with anxiety a little bit, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh, well, will the X-Men wave be the one that we find on Amazon in two months for 10 bucks each? I doubt it. Will the Venom wave be that? Maybe. 
<laughs> Will the Doc it, Ock wave be that? Possibly. Possibly, but I, I mean, don't. honestly, you're kind of stuck. If you're all in, your best bet is to kind of buy them when you see them, hang on to your receipt. A lot of times, stores will price match after you've bought it, like if they put it on sale or something. Even if you're not all in, if there's a figure you want, get it. You know, if you're all in, that's when you're lucky and you can just order by the wave. If you're not all in, I wouldn't hesitate, especially with these Venom figures. I think they're going to be hard to get. I know Doc Ock has been hard to get specifically because people are just in love with that new buck. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing with it other than, hey, look, it's Doc Ock. But Yeah, I mean, it seems pretty specific to him. I don't know that they're going to be able to get a whole heck of a lot out of him other than an eventual Comic-Con Sinister Six repaint pack that we're going to get next year or the year after. But let's start looking at some of the new waves they've announced after I get through my just I couldn't stop photographing Monster Venom. He was just too awesome. (laughs) You got some cool shots in there. I got to give you that. (laughs) But they announced Black Panther Wave 2. And I do like how Dwight Stahl talked about this as he was talking to Marvel. And I'm pretty sure that what he was implying was Jesse Falcon. And they're like, yeah, great Black Panther Wave. What do you have for a Wave 2? And Jesse's and. Dwight's like, you you want to wave too? Well, we don't have anything. And J- Jesse was like, no, no, you're not getting me. What do you have for wave two? And so <laughs> we're getting a wave two. Well, this was a really popular movie, and I think they did really great figures with this. I am super freaking excited to see Oyo and Nakia and Claw. In yeah, well, way. we have Okoyo already. I'm sorry, this is Oyo, not Oyo, Okoya. Right, right. This is different. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm I mean, it, most it, excited, honestly, for one of the best Marvel villains to grace the screen, Claw. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Claw is going to be the real superstar of this wave. It's, it's the thing that's going to visually be different from the previous wave that was out there. Because there are a lot of the Black Panther figures in this wave. You know, to to your average toy buyer, somebody just walking through a store, they're not going to be able to tell the little differences on these different suits and whatnot. But a dude with a, a rocket launcher in his arm and a suit. Yep. Snag him up. I wonder if he comes with an alternate arm. Yeah, I don't know. They didn't show us anything, but no, I. No one has, but I'm guessing we'll either get an alternate arm or that will somehow slide into his arm so it's hidden away. Yeah, that is honestly, and I didn't like Claw at all in Age of Ultron, and I was like, oh God, he's coming back. It's Andy Circus. Is he going to mocap in a red spandex suit? What's going to happen? And then he just absolutely rocked it in Black Panther. I do want his SoundCloud URL. <laughs> <laughs> And then yeah. to Chaka, that is that's a I love the colors, just the paint they did on that. That is that's that can't have been cheap. That I think might be the most intricate paint they've ever done. Yeah, I mean, if they get charged by the color, then yeah, they've they definitely went all out on this one. That one is it's just beautiful, highly detailed, and hopefully it comes out that way when it hits production. But I got to tell you, with this new paint apps have been doing. I think they can do it. I've seen a lot less screw ups on figures on the shelves. You're right, because when I was talking to some of the guys, I found out the only difference between the realistic faces and the other, the sculpts are exactly the same. It's all in the paint. And so they are doing computer painting now. And I think that's why we haven't had lazy eyes in a while. Well, I have to say, it's been a while since I've had to pull out all the figures I can find of a certain character and, like, compare, is this eye good? Is this eye bad? Which one's wonky? Is this one cross-eyed? And I was starting to dread that Venom again. Do you remember a few years ago we had that Walgreens exclusive Venom? No, I'm sorry. It was a Walgreens exclusive Punisher with the white on his chest. Mm -hmm. And I had to go to, like, three different Walgreens and just, like, almost get a magnifying glass and check the best paint. (laughs) I wish they would just redo big time Spider-Man now that they can actually do it right. Oh yeah. Yes. That's, that's a much needed non spray paint 
blurry <laughs> effect needing <laughs> release. But yeah, this T'Chaka, I think that one's going to be fast to go too. I know he wasn't a huge part of the movie in the outfit, but it's just damn pretty. Yeah, and it's it's the one that's different feeling from the rest of them, you know? I mean, you can you can put different heads on and whatnot, but this one feels fresh and different from the rest of the suited bodies. And then we're getting another Black Panther unmasked. Yeah, this this is a little strange because I feel like we have this. I'm not is sure. It, it looks like there's more suit. Yeah, I mean it looks like it's more detail and the the necklace part around his neck has a little more I don't know if it's maybe just a more paint app or what, but it's it feels different y but not enough to get excited about. I just right off the bat. Yeah, I also had a don't we have this already <laughs> kind of vibe, but Hey, I mean, he is in the Billion Dollar Club. He deserves a few figures. Now, I am very excited, though, to get Killmonger in his street clothes and with the tribal mask, though. I mean, yes, that one's awesome. Oh, I really like that. one. Yeah, that's incredible. I love how they pulled off making that mask feel natural in it. I'm, you know, and mm. I mean, you you like to use the word toyetic a lot. And when I first saw the movie and, you know, he was in that museum and he pulled that mask on, I'm like, oh, this has to be a toy. And I'm just glad to see that it's actually coming out. It's it's really cool. It, it kind of walks that line between like a, a Marvel figure and like a cool G.I. Joe character. I was thinking that with the camo and the grenades. <laughs> <laughs> the difference is they actually make Black Panther figures. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, Joe fans. <laughs> and then Oyo. And Oye. I, what? Oye? Oya. Oyo. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think that these women were so badass in the movie. They basically were running everything. They were fierce warriors. I think they got amazing outfits. And I think I'm loving these figures that Hasbro is doing the paint. They're just knocking it out of the park on these figures. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. And what's crazy is I'm not sure how much of this is a repaint from, you know, the, the first, the first wave and how much of this is new, but the paint makes it look like a, a new outfit and a new character. So either mm -hmm. way, good job. Yeah, no, I, I think this is just a fabulous figure and the detail is tremendous in these and i'm so glad that they made a second wave for black panther and i'm glad that they built her because i mean she was in civil war she's the one who told black widow move or you will be moved mm -hmm. she was in infinity war i mean she's like the wedge antilles of black panther <laughs> you know what i mean like she's in the background yeah but she's she not one of the stars she's prominent but not one of the stars and yet she's she and T'Challa himself are the only two to be in all three. Yeah, because they didn't have Okoya or um, Nakia in Infinity. Oh, no, they were in. No, Nakia wasn't in Infinity War. Okoya was. Right, but uh, Okoya was not in Civil War. No. Nope. She was busy yeah. filming Walking Dead. But another great outfit with just a ton of detail. And yeah, I've been told in the past they do pay by the color and just wow on this. It's. A, it's taking it to the next level where they're not yet competing with fig yards, but it's like they're practicing to compete with fig yards. Yeah, I mean, different materials, obviously, but man, they are, I would say with this new face painting technology, they're, they're in the same ballpark, at least on head sculpts and painting on the heads when it comes to that quality. Yeah. And then they teased us with with a Surrey figure, but only had a cutout of her silhouette and thing. And I don't think they ever pulled out an actual figure to show us, but I think they're just kind of putting a place marker there, letting us yeah, know yeah. that that wave will have her in it. Well, it was also announced, I believe, on like IO9 or something the day before Comic-Con. Yeah, they... They announced it, but from what I can tell, no images of it. They just, but yeah, they 
there's no question who it's going to be when you see that silhouette. The thing they teased with, and I remember there was some online discussion on Twitter, and everybody's like, who's the Build-A-Figure? Who's the Build-A-Figure? And I was standing taking photos in the Hasbro booth, and I hear one of the Hasbro guys talking to just somebody, and the person says, so the Build-A-Figure's in Baku, right? And the Hasbro guy goes, yeah. So I go on Twitter, and I'm like, it's in Baku. People are like, cite your source, because you know how Twitter people are. They're jerks. <laughs> <laughs> and I want my source. I'm standing in the Hasbro booth. They just said it. <laughs> and honestly, I, there's so many great characters to come out of Black Panther, but M'Baku's what he's got to be the most fun, right? Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh, yeah. I love M'Baku. <laughs> he's and, awesome. And they nailed it too. I mean, holy cow. The, the whole skirt and the, the furry collar and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, it looked a lot like a pelt in the case, too, when we were looking at it. Yeah, there's just tons of detail. Like, it's if you would have asked me, you know, a month ago, would I be excited about a second wave of Black Panther figures? Uh, not being hyped at the moment about Black Panther, I would have been like, I don't know. But after seeing this in person, this is going to be a great wave. Yeah. It's going to be a hard to get wave. You mm-hmm. talked about the waves that were cheap and things. I was sitting on a spare Guardians of the Galaxy wave from last year that I can't even get what I paid for for it. But this wave, I think, is going to be blinking you miss it. Yeah, I hope not. I mean, they need to find a happy mid ground because it felt like they overshipped the first wave of them somehow. And the second wave is going to be even harder to find than than the Venom wave. Yeah, I think you'll find a lot of the, perhaps the Killmonger with the gold necklace and the unmasked Black Panther, because those just don't feel different. But when you start looking at T'Chaka and Claw and things, those are going to just be gone. Yep, those are, those will be the the little teases to let you know that you just missed it. Then there's the Sauron wave coming of all Deadpool. Oh. <laughs> X-23 slipped in there with Bishop Omega Red, but it's Deadpool. Yeah, I mean, we get two Deadpools and a Lady Deadpool and Deadpool without his pants, which I'm looking forward to. <laughs> you but look this forward is- to a lot of guys without their pants, Justin? <laughs> hey, only as many are willing to come on over. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, just I'll show you grinder when we're done. <laughs> I guess I guess what I'm getting at is only with a Deadpool figure. Are you going to get a twenty dollar action figure of a guy in his boxers and slippers? <laughs> <laughs> you know, five years ago when Deadpool was like, you know, they had a Toy Biz one and then they had that first release of the Hasbro two packs. That was all we had for Deadpool stuff. And now look at us. Remember how expensive that was? It still is, actually, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> That's I love the packaging on these figures. I don't have any pictures of it, but have you seen these in the package? It's just absolutely hysterical, the way they pose this Deadpool in the next one. Oh, yeah, they, they put them in some dynamic poses and whatnot, getting in there. Uh, yeah, I, I like what they're doing there. That's It's funny. And I've heard this wave is starting to show up. GameStop is seeing them, and think target might have seen them already but it's also shipping from some of the online retailers as well and then we get lady deadpool have we gotten one of her recently it's all the deadpools do start to blend she was an exclusive in the three and three quarter inch uh taco truck and then she was an individually uh packaged card in that last line of black cards of Marvel universe before it completely just kind of slipped away. But yeah, we we've had her in three and three quarter inch, never in six inch. So this is, this is cool to have her here in this line. Bishop. I mean, I, I don't have a Bishop figure. I know toy biz made one, but he's looking really comic accurate and everything. I think it's a good time to bring him in. You know, I love when they try to bring in some of these X-Men characters and, yeah, Deadpool's a way to do it. It almost feels like because we didn't get two other X-Men movies this year we were supposed to. It's like, ah, let's put all these guys in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense, even though, 
you know, because we're not going to get for now, at least we're not getting movie universe Deadpool stuff. So it's basically all a comic wave. So this is where you put in those X-Men characters that aren't fitting into your one and only X-Men wave of the year. And yet it feels like we are getting movie Deadpool stuff, given that we have the X-Men trainee uniform. It's not exactly movie accurate, but it feels like that's all they can be referencing. Sure. I mean, it's movie inspired, but not movie accurate like we see in the other waves. Yeah. No Rai Rai heads. Not yet. Omega Omega Red. Red. Oh, such a great character and so much fun in Marvel versus Capcom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another figure that needs an update. I can't remember the last time. It might have been a Toy Biz last time they did him. So definitely a welcome welcome back to the modern line of figures. I thought they made him in a Marvel Universe, the three and three quarter inch for some reason. They did, didn't they? Yeah, they made him yep. a three and three quarter, but six yeah. inch. It's no, six inch we've not had, but I know they made him a three and three quarter. Yep, I think that that, one's sitting around at five belows all over. It is. There's a lot of them there, yes. (laughs) And wasn't he, I think, in like the MODOK wave or something? I think I have the Toy Biz one of this one. Oh, yeah, quite possibly. Yep. Him and Deathlock were about the same time frame. Yeah, it just feels like I have the Toy Biz one, but... You know, the Toy Biz figures are starting to melt on their own. So. Apparently he was in Deadpool too. Omega <laughs> Red was. He was supposed to be. The guy, they hired a guy, they did makeup on him. He's a he's a football player and somehow made his way onto the Deadpool lot. Or he, I mean, not like he just wandered on. Like he, <laughs> he had connections and he wants to be an actor. And they, they did makeup for him. And then they cut that whole plot. So I don't know if there's any shots of him actually in the movie. But yeah, Omega Red was supposed to be a character. that They said he was a, a blink and you miss it cameo. And he was in the icebox. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> and there is that extended edition of Deadpool out on digital now. I haven't yet watched it. So maybe there's more of him in there. Oh, that'll be fun. But the Build-A-Figure of Sauron, this, I love it because they're really getting a sizable Build-A-Figures. I got to admit, I felt ripped off when we got, like, Jubilee as a Build-A-Figure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, Hit he's monkey, like, puck, yes. <laughs> well, those were only at least three figures. But <laughs> even when we got, like, you know, even M'Baku is kind of normal size. When you're building a normal figure, you don't feel like you're getting as much. When you build that monster Venom... That feels like something. This Sauron feels like something. Oh, yeah. Huge wings. Fully, fully new body, I think. I mean, I don't, there might be some parts from Lizard on there, but I was thinking I see some Lizard packs. It's possible, but uh, I don't know. Until we have both of them in hand, it's going to be hard to tell. But even if it is great reuse of parts, I mean, holy cow, this, this is just an incredible figure all the way around. Yeah, I love the, like, loincloth with the pouch and everything. I feel like they've really, the sculptors just, I think that they're really taking it up a notch. Like in previous days, they'd they'd be like, let's give him a little like pocket pouch. And so it'd be say, no, it costs too much. We're going to cut that out. Now they put it in and they get to keep it. (laughs) What's really funny is with this jaw, am I the only one getting a Gina Davis Beetlejuice vibe. <laughs> oh, I see it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the best thing they did here is they just went with a regular tail. The, we haven't reviewed the lizard wave yet, but man, I, I appreciate what they're trying to do by adding some articulation into that tail. But lizards tails don't just bend it like straight angles every three feet. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Looks really unnatural, but here it looks like even if there's not a wire in there to bend it, I'd rather have it look more natural than have like weird right turns every couple feet. Then the wave that got really exciting, and it, I'm not quite sure if it's a wave or exactly how they're doing it, but they announced a lot more X Men figures. Yeah, they they've been kind of cagey about what's coming out and when, and if this is a wave, like you said, because we don't know. That Professor X could be a -a Build-A-Figure, or Professor X could be a figure that you buy, 
and his chair could be multi pieces spread around the wave as an add on, kind of like they did with Vulture's wings from the Spider Man wave a year or two ago. I think what they said was that this is going to be in the Rider series. They kept teasing, like, what should the build a figure be? I've asked Hasbro for clarification. They didn't reply, but I'm pretty sure this and Deadpool on his Vespa with Squirrel Pool and Dog Pool are both in the Rider series that had Wolverine and Black Widow and Ghost Rider. Oh, you know, you're right. I think they did kind of say that, but you're right. It's it's in my head because they kept teasing it during the presentation that way. <laughs> yeah, they were really weird with that presentation. They missed stuff. They didn't bring up stuff. It's a little bit odd. But yeah, I'm pretty sure those are both in the rider wave. Archangel, I was wondering how they'd do him. He's up for order now. He's a, what, $40 figure? No, I think he's only 29 Oh, he's somewhere in there. I'm I'm hoping closer to 30. I mean, he's not worth I think you're right. I think he's 30. Yeah. But with that package he was in, I, I really want to be 40 because it looks like the same kind of package they do their two packs in. Yeah, and possibly a little skinnier. So like a, yet another new package style for, for them to do this. And I don't know. I, I wonder what people think about this. I, you know... Not everybody got a chance to get that original Archangel that from, you know, back in the day. And then a lot of people definitely did not get the the black and silver version from Comic-Con a few years ago. And this is yet a third version. This is a different paint job than the original one. And it comes with some new heads. So is this going to satisfy that or are people still going to go after those other two on the secondary market? Oh, people will still go after the other two, but I'm so glad they included these extra heads because my immediate fear was that they were going to do a chase death head version like they did on the three and three quarter. Remember hunting oh. for that? So when I saw that it was coming with three extra heads, I ordered a case and then was really happy. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, this this will be fun. This is a good figure. And I think I think it's already available. I think I've seen pictures of people with this in hand already. So. It's, I've ordered mine from Big Bad Toy Store and not yet gotten shipping. So maybe it's showing up in stores and the e-tailers haven't gotten it yet. Very possible. GameStop has been getting a lot of stuff and it's kind of hit and miss. So you just never know. But they... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, GameStop has been the place to hit for Marvel figures and other figures, too. I've noticed their stock is fresh and they keep restocking. But yeah, they were putting out a lot of figures here at the end. I mean, we were just struggling to keep up with all the stuff they announced because their panel was Saturday. And I mean, they put out a black cat and silver sable and jokes on them. That movie got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still psyched for a silver sable figure and. Black Cat in her new, more demure villain outfit. Oh, yeah, definitely. A little, little more updated. And I mean, it's still in the comic verse, but it feels a little less like the classic, you know, like 60s version that almost felt a little corny by the time it came out. But this, this has a cool little twist to it. Yeah, and she has, I think, a more updated hairstyle, too, instead of the <laughs> giant white Farrah faucet. Yeah, that helps for sure. And then a couple others. Oh, went too far. Red Goblin. Look at the paint and the detail on Red Goblin. That's first of all, though, I mean, it it's kind of comical. I know that's the style, but it looks like he's got really hairy eyebrows. <laughs> it, it does look he's got the Ernest Borg nine thing going. But he also, with the big yellow, looks like almost a Dea de los Muertos or a, a Mardi Gras mask. <laughs> I still think this is somewhat of a joke image because he did not look like that in person. Let's get to the real shot here. Yeah, this is what he looked like in person. So he was a little more toned down. <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody... At Hasbro was screwing around and put those eyes on there. Or maybe it's just the light hit it just right to really highlight them. But it almost looks goofy in the in the hero vanity shot. 
But when you see it in person, it's like, oh, wow, cool figure. Yeah, I mean, you're right. It does look really silly. It's The yellow is so bright in the press photo. And in person, it's like I couldn't even tell that the mouth was yellow until I really stared at it. Also, though, Hasbro does horrible top-down lighting. It's, you know, a lot of shadow in there. <laughs> it is terrible to take pictures in that booth. But in between, I mean, with the Spider-Man wave next year, build a kingpin. Now, it may not be the Vincent D'Onofrio kingpin I've been bugging Dwight for, but this is awesome. Another oh, big yeah. build a figure. Yeah, and it's about time we got one of these, I think. I mean, he's a pretty good character, well-known, and a lot of fun, I think, to have to diorama if you were doing dioramas with your figures. Yeah, and it just, I mean, it looks great, and it's got articulation. I know some people are asking if it has articulation in the knees, and I'm pretty sure it does. You know, Yeah, they yeah it does. Okay, good. Because they didn't let us touch it or anything. This was a late edition on, was it Saturday or was it Sunday morning that this made its way out there? It was Saturday, but they didn't put it in the case until Sunday morning. You had to find a Hasbro employee Saturday afternoon. Right. So, yeah, I mean, this is cool. And this gives me hope that, you know, a figure like this, they could also do a blob figure sometime in the near future as a build a figure again. <laughs> blob would be fun. and. Mm-hmm. Then Gambit, I about damn time. Yeah, I mean we've had several rogue figures. It's cool to get a Gambit with the Mister and Mrs X series going on, and I really like the translucent card he's holding there. I'm wondering if that's wedged in there or molded. Yeah, it it looks like it's probably an accessory that you can pop in there. I just I'm hoping this is prototypey. And it's there's nothing really wrong with the figure. I'm just done with this trench coat. It's time to retire <laughs> this trench coat. And is this the, the one that one. like Nick Fury had years yes. and years ago? It's the same one that every time we get a trench coat figure here it shows up again. It's it's time for a new one. Well, wait. I mean, Blade had a different one because they were going to use that old trench coat for an old blade, and they made a new blade and used a different body. But the same trench coat. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, bringing out some other figures like Magic is coming back with a new paint scheme on it. It almost looks better than the one that we got before. Kind of fun. They're bringing back, you know, some Build-A-Figures. The Ultron is coming out in the 10th anniversary line with some new paint apps. God, you're jumping all over on me, Justin. Don't Sorry. Don't order. <laughs> order the slides. <laughs> you must follow the rules, Justin. You cannot just talk. <laughs> I will talk as I please. We have this dude to talk about. <laughs> Is he from the Insane Clown Posse? No, it's... He looks like a juggalo. It's him. The, the juggalo guy. It's, I don't know who it is. It's dude with the hubcap shoulder. <laughs> I is he totally... a wrestler? I'm totally blanking on his name now. <laughs> I really don't know who he is, so I'm sorry. I I really would have thought Juggalo. <laughs> yeah, he's uh he's built on that Deathlock body that we just got, which is kind of cool, you know, using those cable-ish, you know, muscular legs, which is a neat thing to do and a strap of bullets is always neat and it's I mean, it's a cool face paint. I kind of dig it. It does kind of have a little bit of a Juggalo-ish feel to it with the the clown <laughs> The clown paint. But <laughs> <laughs> and the really weird outfit. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I'm really feeling bad that I don't have the name off the top of my head here. But <sighs> this is our first live show. It's bound to have a couple of bumps. We will know now for next time to write that down. <laughs> but then, yeah, the Marvel 10th anniversary line, they announced that we were getting Ultron. And this is a GameStop first figure, right? Not a GameStop exclusive. Uh, yeah, you tell me. I'm having a hard time keeping up with this 10th anniversary line. Like, what's ex exclusive? What's not? What's coming someplace first? It's it's really bone difficult crusher. to keep up with it. It's Bone Crusher, people. <laughs> <laughs> who was the nice person who told us? Robbie. 
Thank you, Robbie. Yeah, it is getting a little confusing because GameStop has this GameStop first thing like they did with the back in black Deadpool that when I saw it at Target, I'm like, I own this, right? It was at GameStop. Did somebody go to GameStop next door, buy it and return it to Target? (laughs) Yeah, first there and then at Target and at Walmart. Uh, You can just pick up that Deadpool anywhere. It seems like he's readily available and I I don't know that that same type of thing is going to happen with this 10th anniversary line. But yeah, you never know. Yeah, I'm looking at GameStop's oh, apparently website. Apparently, Skullbuster. Skullbuster, not Bone. Hold Crush. on, let me verify. Toy Wiz is already selling this Ultron, so I think it's a GameStop first. I did place my order at GameStop.com while in the panel to get this. Oh, and it's Skullbuster. It's Skullbuster. And also for anyone who's looking for the Venom Wave and you're listening to us live, uh, looks like just about all of them are in stock right now at GameStop.com. Oh, nice. I know they have Spider-Ham and Poison and Venom, so at least those three are sitting in stock and so you can look see what else they have. But yeah, this Ultron, it's nice to get him back out there with a better paint app, isn't it? I mean, it was a good figure, but... On the one hand, I'm like, well, I bought a lot of figures to build a figure, and now you're just kind of selling them to me for 30 bucks. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the theme that's going on right now. I mean, that's a lot of build a figures are being repacked and repainted and upgraded. And I mean, they did it with Ares. Yeah, they did it with Ares. You know, if we want to continue with the 10th anniversary line, there's the Hulkbusters coming back out in a repaint. You've got this Ultron, which, by the way, these pictures might not do it justice. When we had this thing in hand, you could really pick out all the tiny little parts that they put red in. And it, there's, like, different tones of shiny silver and gunmetal on him. It's really cool looking in person. Yeah, it, it is impressive. I uh, The photos they gave do not do it justice, but there's so much detail that, yeah, it's worth coming back out for. I just think there's other, you know, build a figures they could still be bringing back. Like Jubilee. (laughs) (laughs) Don't make me buy a Chinese bootleg, people. (laughs) Yeah, I'm guessing Jubilee will be back around. That that whole wave feels like it could probably be re-released except it kind of feels like they've they kind of did re-release it just with updates with the the current x-men wave you know that's a got another storm and another magneto and another wolverine it almost feels like that same toys r us wave just with a different build a figure well let's get go through these just kind of showing off what else they showed we don't know when these are coming out but we are getting a polaris figure yep with some cool, cool translucent stuff coming up that I don't know if our pictures show it or not, but holy cow. Let me know when we're there because the next figure really has me excited. Hercules? Well, before Hercules. Oh, I was already there. Were we? oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let me know when you're at the next slide. I'm like, are you talking about the current slide? <laughs> yes, it's my Marvin the Martian figure. But <laughs> it is Janice Vell in his Cree outfit, and the Hasbro people wouldn't answer any questions about it. They didn't even talk about it in their presentation. They just quietly put it in the booth. And I think what we're seeing is the first reveal of the Captain Marvel movie wave. Right. But they did do something cool for us because as he was putting it in there, I caught a glimpse of it. And at the way it looks, it looks like it's a black body with some glittery paint on it. But in closer inspection, the entire body is translucent with glitter throughout the body. So if you hold it up to a light, Ooh. it's got that really cosmic feel to it. That sounds really cool. It yeah. did look really pretty. And I think with a backlight, it would really 
show off more than these in hand figures that I was snapping as he was trying to put it in the case. <laughs> okay, that explains the big hand in there. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these were, you know, snap pictures as they're getting put in. Every once in yeah. a while they'd hold them up for us, but it was they're putting them in with a crowd and had to get the box back on there. Yeah, it's like paparazzi, huh? Oh yeah. And then another big guy coming, Hercules, Hercules. Yeah, I and just I never don't think that. <laughs> cool update to Hercules. Last time we got him, he was really, you know, old school gladiator with like the sandal boots and everything. This this looks like a nice, cool, modern upgrade to that. Yeah, it wasn't all that long ago, right? It was around the time that I was reading that Hercules dating She-Hulk comic. So I feel like four or five years ago we got him. Oh, it's been more than that. It's like that just sounds it, crazy. <laughs> Sorry. It was around the first time uh, Hasbro wound down the six inch line and then before they brought it back. OK, so I must be thinking of the three and a quarter. Yes. But then, yeah, here's the case that they put out all together, including a couple of sweet two packs. I have, I'm not, Marjorie's in the room, so I'm not going to say how many of these guys I've ordered so far. Arnie, we've been together for 18 years. And I don't want that to end by Married telling you how 16. many cases I've bought. That's just that, because Marjorie, it's not about how many he bought, it's about how many cases he's bought. <laughs> Do you really think that there's a, an amount of anything or anything you could buy that would make me think, you know what? I think I've had enough of Arnie. <laughs> a, a baker's dozen of eight boxes. <laughs> I just love, I think I did the math and you could do 40 combinations of the same soldier. Yeah. With like four heads, two bodies, various straps and guns and everything. But then I decided, would that really be, oh, I'm really messing up tonight. Uh, I had a flu, so I'm going to blame that. This is Blink. Blink and you miss me. But yeah. <laughs> he did have food poisoning yesterday and still part of today. So, yeah, like 40 combinations. But, I mean, if I'm doing, first of all, they need to make a damn MODOK, right? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> we need a MODOK. Dwight, if you're listening, it is about damn time for you to make a MODOK. And, Modoc and Dupe are my two like favorites that you need to make. And I was told by one of the Hasbro design leads that like the whole team listens to our show. So no pressure that I just screwed up three names. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't eaten in two days. <laughs> but uh, if I had a Modoc or like my toy biz one, and I were to put all these aim soldiers around him, would I really want them to look like a ragtag bunch who just grabbed whatever was in their closet? Or would I want them all to look the same? <laughs> well, that's the nice thing about this. This is a re-release of, we already did get the aim soldier as a single release years ago. Yep. So this is nice that this is a way for people who didn't get that to get a regular aim soldier and then a way to build other cool guys around that. My, this to me, this pack has more allure than the Hydra pack. I really loved that Hydra pack, but for whatever reason, the Aim Soldiers just feel so much more. I don't know. There's just something more soldiery and comicy about them that just makes it more fun. They're absolutely ridiculous, and I love them. Yeah the the big hat. It reminds me. Of, remember the Microsoft bunnies? Yes. <laughs> yep. They dance to Disco Inferno while putting your Pentium chip together. <sighs> Oh, yeah. And then another two pack Spider Gwen and Miles Morales Spider Man for the Into the Spider Verse movie that looks like possibly the best Spider Man based movie of this year. Sorry, Venom. Yep. And I, this one confuses me a little bit. Like, it's obviously going to be an updated version of Miles Morales to match the, I think, the movie a little bit better. But I think it's just a straight re release of Spider Gwen at this point. It does look that way. Yeah, Miles definitely has an updated paint job. That's a new logo on his chest from before. And Spider-Gwen, it's it's a way to get her back out there. Remember how hard she was to get? Oh, my gosh, yes. It was two years ago, and I remember using the toy plastic lightsabers from the Star Wars line to pull stuff off the top shelf at Walmart so I could look through the cases up there. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit extreme. Sorry. And then the vintage figures are coming back. Another wave of six of those. 
How, how excited are you for this, Justin? Because I kind of felt like the last ones, they weren't Star Wars vintage hits. You know, I think I liked when they did the Amazon three and three quarter inch pack with Spider-Man and the Sinister Six more than the six inch Toy Biz carded ones. Yeah, I mean, I like the concept. I do. But you're right. It doesn't hit the same nostalgia bone as the Star Wars line does. But having said that, I'm I was surprised to see that they're continuing with it. I mean, that that first wave, I mean, it was hard to find when it first came out. But then it just kind of I mean, it went on clearance at Walgreens. I was able to put together a whole nother set for, you know, I think at around five dollars a figure on those. I, but, I did the same thing at Amazon over Christmas. I think I got an entire wave for 30 or 35. <laughs> but here's what's uh, going on here. What I'm digging is if they're going to do it, give us cool versions of stuff. Like this vision, what a great way to get a classic vision out to us. So when do I get figure shields that can hold these damn cards? Yeah, well, let's see how these go and how fast they come out. <laughs> Because I was hoping that they would be the same size as the Star Wars, but they just weren't. They had to be their own different size. Oh, man. <laughs> but that classic Hawkeye, that was pretty popular when he was out. So it's good that they're putting that back out there. And you Black know, Panther makes sense with all the Black Panther stuff. But to get a real comic-y Black Panther out there. And I do love the card art. I cannot lie that the card art really takes me back. I just, I have nostalgia for the Toy Biz figures, especially of this series, because I was buying them in the 90s. It's just something about them in six inch. It doesn't have the same feel as three and three quarter inch. You know, the, if they gave me it to me on a six by nine, I think I'd feel it more, but then it wouldn't be a six inch figure, which is all they're really making. <laughs> and one thing to note is this Spider-Man is a re-release of, you know, a previous one, but it's got a completely different paint job. He's got like a, a candy apple, like metallic -y red finish on him that is way different than the dull red plastic the first release had. And then maybe this means that the Toy Biz figure will come down in price. One of my holy <laughs> grails has been a Toy Biz blue wasp. She goes for around 500. <gasps> yep. That and Dwight worked at Toy Biz and he was one of the ones who was trying to get that figure out. It was late in the MODOK wave, never got the release it should have. And so, God, what's it been? 10, 15 years later, Dwight is finally getting this out to the masses. Yeah, this this feels like a real pet project, something for Dwight to get off his chest and something for a lot of us old timers who, like you said, Arnie, that was, it was a running change variant late in the line and I can't tell you how many were made, but it's got to be one of the shortest run figures to ever make it actually out to retail because it is never, ever dipped in price over these 15 years that it's been out. Yeah, I every so often see one. Oh, wow. Now, I've seen it go for 500 right now on eBay. Five thousand. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> yeah. Let me look for completed listings and see what it has completed for. Okay, one did sell. Oh, wait, nope, not a blue wasp. So, yeah, this maybe this will bring the Toy Biz blue wasp down a little bit so that I can actually <laughs> afford one. <laughs> At any rate, I think it's cool to do stuff like that just to, as a nod to something that has a lore to it. You know, this this is almost like a blue snaggletooth in the Star Wars line, you know? Mm -hmm. And I like that wasp comes with Ant-Man and Ant-Man comes with wasp instead of just... Ant-Man coming with Ant-Man. And that is the San Diego Comic-Con mini Ant-Man, by the way. I know him anywhere. Oh, the one that came with yep. a little... Matchbox. Yeah. Yep, they're getting they're getting a lot of mileage out of those little guys. They've come out in numerous different ways, but yes, they're... They, what I'm liking about this next wave is that they've they've put a little bit of an accessory in each one, you know? they The, the Vision comes with an Ultron skull, so you can recreate that classic cover. And Black Panther has some power effects for for his fists. So they're, they're trying to get a little something extra in the package for you there. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Speaking of extra in the package, a Luke Cage two pack is coming to Walmart with Claire Temple. We are finally getting Night Nurse. 
Nice. And she's got some ghostly hands grabbing for her out of the Those side there. Those are ghostly. Those are, you know, the <laughs> Those are latex, latex. gloves. I know, was... but the way they're packaged in there, it looks like some like zombie hands like trying to <laughs> trying to get out of it. It does look like the great scene from Day of the Dead with all the arms. I don't know what's on the top. Are those hands? Because they look like little whiskey brooms. What are you talking about? Between the two figures? I have not watched all of Luke Cage season one, but it looks like she also comes with hands that have like knives on them. Oh. She doesn't do that in Daredevil, and so that must be from a different scene. Okay. Oh, I see what you're talking about above her purse and the between them there. Yeah. Weird, some sort of like claw hand type of accessory. I, is that her medical bag or a purse? Because I'd hope it's a medical bag instead of they actually gave her a purse accessory. I think what it is is a messenger bag. Oh, okay. In which she will carry medical supplies. Okay. It's a Manny pack. It's for a Luke. Manny pack. <laughs> and Walgreens, we've already got three of the figures. Mr. Fantastic seems to have been hit or miss. God knows Human Torch and invisible woman were everywhere yeah, now we just gotta wait the on army. the thing always waiting on the thing aren't we always i got one from overseas i couldn't wait anymore and i got one for 20 bucks shit wow. so nice yeah I'm, I, I'm hoping he's coming pretty quick it's it's been a while we, we were talking to the guys at the booth the hasbro booth asking when these are supposed to hit because for whatever for some reason Silver Surfer has been available in like Mexico and in Europe since the beginning of the year. Mm hmm. And here and we are Singapore. In, and yeah, here we are in August and they're just now hitting hitting store shelves. Yeah. So I would have thought thing would be before Silver Surfer just because, you know, do the Fantastic Four and then do their shiny little friend. But no, the got Silver Surfer first and then we can finally get the ever loving thing. <laughs> a kind of a strange Walmart exclusive magic. You finally, now you can talk about magic, Justin. <laughs> well, hey, yes, we get to talk about magic. <laughs> uh, you know, she came in that set from Comic-Con a few years ago, and I always thought it was cool to have her. Didn't pay too much attention to her until, you know, you're poking around Facebook and you see people talking about her. That original figure alone goes for a lot of money. I mean, that that's I've seen it 200 and up for just that one figure. So I think it's cool that they're getting this back out there for people who want a chance to own a magic figure. They're not changing it so much that you feel like you're getting ripped off by not having the first version. It's the same thing. Updated paint apps. They've given her eyes this time. So if you if you really want the the magic eye version, you can just paint over it <laughs> and do it that way. But I, I kind of like that they're taking some of these harder to find figures and making them available for for new collectors or people who just can't get their hands on exclusives every once in a while. Let me know when they get Satana out there. I don't think that'll ever happen. <laughs> yeah, that you've called that one from day one just because of the boobage issue. But yeah, <laughs> and the <laughs> fact that she's named Satan. Well, that that plays a little bit into it, but it's more about the boobs. And I gotta love that Magic comes with these totally death metal Ozzy Osbourne accessories. <laughs> they just feel like the front of a Ozzy cover. <laughs> totally do. <laughs> and then we'll go through these rather quickly. They did show off quite a bit of the 10 years collection, most of which is out there. We're going to get, you know, a badass Ronin. Uh, the Thor and Sif set have mine is already shipped. Yeah. Uh, three pack with Trevor. <laughs> Trevor. <laughs> That's my winner so far. This is my favorite out of all of the 10-year stuff. Because you have the tattoo. It's my tattoo. It's we're finally getting Trevor. We're getting a Pepper Potts. I think it's it's the most newness in one of these sets so far. It's the one to get most excited about. There's something off with the goatee on Tony Stark here, but I am excited to get a new Mark One with current articulation of things. Because remember, back then they weren't doing Legends. They were doing kind of a kiddie-ish Iron Man six-inch line. It was... It, they were doing Legends. A lot of the figures were well-articulated. They did two versions of... Well, maybe not this one. They did two versions of Iron Monger. This is yeah. Mark One. But yeah, it always had that, for whatever reason, they put that little rocket launcher on the side of them that... It was a little hard to ignore, and I think this is the same mold, Arnie. I think they just repainted it to look nicer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he sounded so disappointed. <laughs> oh, all 
right. Then I actually like the fact that we're getting a yellow jacket who's a much better looking character than he was an actual character. Oh, yeah. This, you know, I, I already have that set and it, I was pretty excited that they did it. It was basically because of yellow jacket and crossbones that got me excited about the, the concept of them going back in time and bringing us some of these movie characters that they didn't do at the time of movie release. And I have this set. I have two of them because I figured Marjorie would want a Cap versus Crossbones set. I would always like an extra Captain America. And then, yeah, some other figures coming out. An MCU Thanos. It looks like Doctor Strange has a barbell. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. New magic effect there, but yeah, it looks yeah. like something's coming off of his wrist. <laughs> and then the Rider series. We talked about Professor X and Deadpool, but yeah, Wolverine coming with a couple different heads. Yep, that's out there already. People have been finding that, I think, at GameStops and whatnot, and it's available to order online already. And then finally, they didn't even talk about this at the panel, but in the press release photos, finally, you know, this leaked back in January. We've known this was coming since January. <laughs> <laughs> But because of Hasbro's rules, we couldn't talk about it at all. But yes, there is a Days of Future Past box set coming. We now have all the details. It's a repainted Sentinel from the MU line. Yay! I like the Sentinels. <laughs> and I'm not sure how much of it is repainted. Because remember, there was two versions of the Sentinel yeah. the first time around. This looks so like the second version. Yeah. But yeah. this time, instead of getting a three and three quarter inch figure, we're getting a six inch figure. So what it is, is the Sentinel shorter in scale. <laughs> yeah. It looks like they've kept the electronics on him because there is the circle you can see cut out here. So that in stores, you could like push the chest. and. But I, I want to say something about this. This is a really elaborate retail package, guys. I'm going to bet this isn't a retail item. Is it Amazon? I think it's an Amazon exclusive. I believe it's an Amazon it? exclusive. I think it was supposed to be Toys R Us around the time of the Dark Phoenix movie. Okay. And now neither the Dark Phoenix movie nor Toys R Us are happening. Because this screams <laughs> well, the like... the Dark Phoenix movie may come out someday. This screams convention exclusive. It does look like one, but I think it's, yeah, it's going to be on Amazon. Yep. And it already was a... Was it an Amazon exclusive or was it Galactus? Maybe both of them. Maybe Galactus one year and then the Sentinel the next year was an exclusive on the on the card. But those were San Diego exclusives, not Amazon. Sure. Yeah, the yeah. card the carded was San Diego and then the regular retail package. Um Toys R Us was the only one who carried it, but it was boxed. Yep. And some of those some of those made their way to Ross stores. I remember people years later picking yeah. those up on the cheap. But yeah, it's kind of cool. We're getting an updated version of Old Man Logan with, you know, more of the the Bride of Frankenstein hair going on there. Yeah, it's it's a cool Logan in that it's, yeah, a mixture of old man Logan and giving us just kind of that days of future past old Logan. But, yeah, I like the set. I'm definitely going to be getting at least one. Yeah. But like you said, I think the real news is that it was just roundly ignored. Like there's no, <laughs> they didn't have one on display. They didn't bring it up at all in the in the panel. It was just, oh yeah, we forgot about this, and then they dropped images of it like during the con. <laughs> and they didn't even put any information out. <laughs> and then the other thing that they didn't show us, but they did put a press release out during the convention is a Marvel Legends Spider-Verse Spider-Man from the game. Yep, but this is a GameStop exclusive, and I believe you can pre-order it. And it's I have, yes. It's an October release for when the game comes out. Game so, comes yeah. out in September, my birthday weekend, actually. I might okay. have ordered the entire Spider-Man PS4 bundle for myself <laughs> for my birthday. Well, happy huh. birthday. <laughs> well, Let me I know guess... if you're getting rid of a PS4 for cheap. <laughs> I was just going to put one in the living room as well as one in the theater. <laughs> but I might be a little hyped for this game. And Adi Granov has done some great designs here on this outfit. And I might ask Adi to paint me one at New York. It's a nice outfit with the, you know, 
I mean, in a one hand, it almost does look like he's wearing a, a denim backpack with those straps. And yeah, he's then... got overalls on. <laughs> <laughs> Oshkosh the spider. <laughs> and then, yeah, it's the white spider logo, but I, I love that white spider logo. If the game's as good as I'm hoping, I might get a white tattoo of that spider logo that only, like, shows up barely. Ooh, under black light. Yeah. No, I think I think it's cool. I, I like when they do something more different with Spider-Man than just slight differences between where the blue stops and this line doesn't go there. This, this at a quick glance, you think, oh, that's a unique looking Spider-Man. Well, you know what they're doing here, and this is really our last slide of the night, so I'll, I'll expand. Well, we got a couple more, but they're trying to make to Spider-Man what the Arkham games are for Batman. And in Arkham, Batman had a slightly different look so they could sell you all the toys and stuff. And it had a really in-depth storyline. This game looks, I love the Arkham games, and this game looks like it's going to not be as dark, but be as involved and as fun with Spider-Man. Yeah, and a story-driven and whatnot. So yeah, it's, I'm excited for the figure. I don't have a PS4. I'm hoping, you know, that maybe I'll, find somebody getting rid of one around Christmas because some kids have been bad or whatnot. <laughs> Maybe I'll just come over to your house and play for the weekend. And then we mentioned that they're, the thing is they're doing a lot more conventions than just San Diego anymore. And one's already happened. The unboxing convention in Mexico and they revealed new legends there that they had out. Oh Yeah. What do we got here? Dark Hawk? Nighthawk. Nighthawk. Dark. Golf you just Hawk said Dark is... Knight. <laughs> <laughs> you got me in Arkham mode. You got Batman on the brain. <laughs> this cape. Holy cow. Kind of got a uh, Count Chocula type of vibe going on here. It is a really awesome cape. I can't. The way it stands up from the shoulders. I mean, on the one hand... Yeah, it's a, a little bit of a silly design. <laughs> but on the other hand, the fact that they were able to replicate it in toy form so well. I always get a Space Ghost vibe off of his cape. I don't know why. Well, yeah, I can see that Space Ghost had the big... Uh, Exaggerated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they also had the same type of cowl. Where, yeah. You know. <laughs> but yeah. We... I th oh, go ahead. I was just going to say this, you know, this is another example of a figure that we had in three and three quarter inch years ago, now coming into the, the modern six inch line. And then I think we know what our build a figure is going to be for that Captain Marvel wave, this Cree Sentry. Oh, yeah. It is definitely a build a figure. I can't tell if we're seeing some reused parts there or not, but. Yeah, I'm not familiar so. enough with. I'm not familiar enough with that new apocalypse to know if yeah. there might be some parts from there or not. But they look like apocalypse boots, is what I was thinking. They do a lot. Hmm. And then the third figure they revealed, Living Laser. <laughs> oh, yeah. And all of his translucent glory. <laughs> Yet another three and three quarter inch figure brought to the six inch scale. But hey, I'm cool with it. I I kind of dig the way this looks even though it does look, kind of look like a sex toy based on Marjorie's laughter. <laughs> oh, no, that's not what I thought he looked like. God. I was actually thinking he looks like the guy from, oh, the people in the red suits, that movie. It's a cartoon. Ah. The stretchy one, the woman's stretchy. Incredibles. Yes. The, the sidekick guy. Frozone? Frozone? Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I've not seen that movie. And I probably won't see that movie. You saw it in theaters with me. Like 15 years ago. Well, that is it for this episode of Marvelicious Toys. We're going to be back in a couple more weeks. We still got to talk Hasbro three and three quarter inch, Hot Toys, Sideshow, Kodo, Mezco, all the Co's. <laughs> um, are we going to talk figure arts? Because I'm going to have a problem with figure arts. I'm just telling you get, right off the bat, they're amazing and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And they're only growing. I know. I want them all. So thank you for joining us live. We hope you'll join us live more often. We've really enjoyed the interaction. 
and the corrections as you guys tell us <laughs> what we do wrong. <laughs> uh, you know what? Hey, things happen. Not everyone knows the name of everything. You actually have been really sick this week with food poisoning. Not my fault. Not my cooking. No. Yeah, but- just stop buying fish off the back of guys you don't know's trucks. Exactly. That right. van. I'm not going to buy fish from it anymore. <laughs> But yes, thank you for tuning in. We hope that you're as happy as we are that Marvelicious Toys is back with our what we're calling Volume 2. We're going to be doing this all the time, being live, getting video as well as the audio, kind of bringing back some of the old kind of enhanced podcasts with some video and maybe even get some live video in here as weeks go on. Definitely. That- we- go ahead. I was- We've talked about doing, you know, some surprises and stuff like that. We might pop in and do live videos of toy runs as they're happening. And like Arnie said, some mini reviews. Maybe we don't have time to do a whole review or for a show, but we'll do reviews of a wave on our own or something like that. So you're going to you'll be seeing and hearing a lot more from us in this this new format. We hope you enjoy it. We enjoy doing it for you. Thank you for listening. Justin Marjorie, thank you for joining me. And until next time, make mine Marvelicious Toys. Two. Thank you for listening to this episode of Marvelicious Toys. There's even more Marvelicious content at our website, MarveliciousToys.com. You can see pictures of the products we discussed find checklists for collectibles, and read articles on Marvel movies, comics, and collecting. It's all at MarveliciousToys.com. You can also help out our show by telling your friends to listen by posting on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or in person. We would also greatly appreciate a five-star review written on iTunes. A link to our iTunes feed is at MarveliciousToys.com. We want your feedback. You can email us at show at MarveliciousToys.com or find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Find all those links at our website. If you also like Star Wars, Star Wars Collecting is covered at our other podcast, Star Wars Action News, which you can find at SWActionNews.com. Marvelicious Toys is produced and edited by Artie Carvalho. Video editing by Berent, Andrew, and Daryl. Graphic design by Justin. Photo editing by Jeff and Curtis. Announcements by Brock. If you want to hear reviews of every movie ever based on Marvel Comics, check out those reviews and hundreds more on the Now Playing Podcast at nowplayingpodcast.com. Marvel Comics and all of the Marvel Multiverse contains are the intellectual property of Marvel Entertainment Incorporated, a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company and no infringement is intended. Marvelicious Toys is a Venganza Media production, copyright 2018, all rights reserved, and no part of this show may be reproduced, repurposed, or redistributed without the written permission of Venganza Media Incorporated. <laughs>